Uh, I'm back. I apologize for those who are here. Uh, there's a problem with the normal login with Zoom for me because uh, the way I've been doing it, I just go to the Zoom webpage, hit sign in. I've been doing that for almost two years now and it wouldn't let me in. And I was talking with the help desk at COD and they were having the same problem. So it wasn't my equipment. Why it decided to go blue, <laughs> I don't know, but we were able to find a different way. All right, let's start out. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a late start, Chem 1105, due to the Zoom problem that a lot of people are having. I'll be recording this. Uh, let's get, let me open up something because normally I have this all prepared. And I was playing with By the way, my eyes are doing really good. This one's pretty clear now. I can actually see everything right up here. If I get a little closer, it gets fuzzy, but things are looking good. All right, this Friday, I'll be giving test number four. I'll do it just like in the past. I'll send out an email and everybody, can you see test number four? Review. Thumbs up, people. Okay. Thank you, Elena. Elena. All right, let's go through and do this. All right, for test number four, you should know that a Bronsted Lori acid is any substance that can donate a proton, or just write down proton donor. You should know. Bronsted Lori base, any substance that can accept the proton. It's a proton acceptor. Bronsted Lori acid, proton donor, base, proton acceptor. You should know HCl, hydrochloric acid is an acid. H2SO4, sulfuric acid is an acid. HNO3, nitric acid, it's an acid. Bases you should know, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, sodium hydro, uh, potassium hydroxide, KOH, ammonia. And let me get my stylus because I didn't even get my white, my writing tablet done. This is all stuff I would have done before if I had been able to log in. And there's one other base you should be familiar with. We talked about it, and that's sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3. And you should know these. It's not an important information, so learn it. Now, dissociation of water, because of that, you should know this H3O concentration, hydronium times hydroxide equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Next, you should know acidic solution. The hydronium ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. For basic solution, the hydroxide is greater than the hydronium. And I won't ask, but it's sometimes called alkaline. And for neutral, they're equal. The concentration hydronium, whoa.
is equal to the concentration of hydroxide. Now, pH concept, I won't ask what it is, but the pH is minus the log of the hydronium. And when the hydronium ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus fifth, my special gift to you it will always be that, then the pH is X. So when this number is there, then the pH is X. And we went through that, go back and look at the videos. Now, this you should know. See, I even wrote important. And this is the pH scale. It goes from zero to 14. At seven, it's neutral pH. Hydroxide equals hydronium. Below seven, it's acidic. And the reason your stomach acid is below seven is because there's an acid present. It's acidic. There's an acid. Above seven, it's basic. You need to know this. The lower the pH, the more acidic. The higher the pH, the more basic. Again, this I will not give you. You need to learn. Now, there's an important thing called a buffer. And a buffer is a solution that resists major changes pH when small amount of acid or base is added. And as in the problem set, if you add a small amount of acid to a beaker of water at 7.0, what happens to the pH? It stays the same if you have a buffer solution. If it was water, the pH would go down, but in a buffer, it stays the same. If you have a buffer solution, and you add a small amount of base, what happens to the pH, the numerical value of this pH? It stays the same. All right, in titration, at neutralization, when the indicator changes, moles of acid equals moles of base. And because of that, here's for monoprotic acids, which all I'll ever give to you, and bases, you have milliliters of acid equal molarity times molarity of acid equal milliliters of base times molarity of base. And you will be given three of these, like milliliters acid, milliliters of base, molarity of base, and you'll have to calculate the molarity of acid. And we went through this. Look at the problem set. Here, if I gave you milliliters of acid, molarity of acid, milliliters of base, you'd solve for base molarity. And we've done that. Next, organic chemistry. You should know carbon atom always has four, that's four, four bonds, don't count my thumb, four bonds to carbon. Two and two, four. You should know that. And some other stuff on there is interesting, but no, carbon has four bonds to carbon. There's some definitions I'd like you to know. Hydrocarbon, that's a molecule with only carbon and hydrogen atoms. You should know hydrocarbon, molecule with only carbon and hydrogen atoms. There are two types of hydrocarbons you should know the definition of. Saturated hydrocarbon means it's totally full of hydrogen. There's a molecule since it's a hydrocarbon with only carbon hydrogen atoms in which all carbon carbon bonds are single bonds. Saturated hydrocarbon, carbon and hydrogen atoms only, and only carbon carbon single bonds. Unsaturated, and I apologize for speeding, but you can go back and look at the video, which I'll post by tomorrow morning at the latest. But 
for unsaturated hydrocarbons. This is a hydrocarbon. It's a molecule with carbon and hydrogen atoms. But the on, that looks awful. The unsaturated part, on means it can have more hydrogen. You can add more hydrogens, which means it has either a double or triple carbon carbon double bond. So unsaturated hydrocarbon, you should know, is a molecule of carbon and hydrogen atoms that contains one or more carbon carbon double or triple bonds. Or if you put down multiple bonds, that would be okay too. Now, functional groups. I talked about a functional group. That's anything that's not a carbon or hydrogen or a carbon-carbon single bond in a molecule. And how do you find it? You look for that. An example would be Where are the circle the functional groups in that molecule? Your turn. All right, you look for what's not a carbon carbon single bond, two lines here. That's a double bond, and that's a functional group. Ooh, oxygen, that's not carbon or hydrogen, put a hydrogen on it. And this is another functional group, it's called an alcohol. You're taking organic chemistry, which now I only teach at Elgin Community College, because uh, of political reasons here. But that would be called an alcohol. Now, how to draw organic molecules, I taught you condensed structure to parentheses. I really should just delete from here. And how do you put in the hydrogens? You count bonds. There's always four bonds to carbon. If there aren't, the remainder are hydrogens. This first carbon has one bond, one line, and four minus one equals three. So it has three hydrogens. The second carbon, two dots, has one, two bonds to it. And four minus two equals two. So it would have two hydrogens. And this last one, I'll put three dots in there, has only one bond, one line, but it should always have four. Four minus one is three. By the way, this is propane. That's the name of this chemical. And that's the stuff in the white. Let me do my three better there. In the white tank that you use for your barbecue. Now I talked about cyclic compounds, that means rings. And remember, each bend in a line is a carbon. And if you do line method, which I don't do the full line for this class, each end of a line is a carbon and each intersection and each bend. But for this one, for our class, how many carbons in this ring? Well, you count the bends. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six carbons in that ring. And as I did yesterday, I asked you to be able to do the following. Uh-oh, I'm having a bad ring drawing day. It's like you have bad hair days. Sometimes organic chemists have bad ring drawing days. Let's do it better. And on the test,
how many carbons are in this molecule. Or carbon atoms. And why don't you do that? It's your turn. All right, I think everybody's done. Let's do it. Well, how many carbons are in that molecule? Well, if I look at the ring, every bend in the line is carbon. One, two, three, four, five. So the ring has five carbons. This one is six, seven, eight. So it's five plus two, five plus one plus two equals eight. And you should know how to do that. If I ask you how many carbons in a molecule, you should do that. Next, I asked you to learn about only two general reactions. If you have a saturated hydrocarbon react with oxygen, you need a spark. You got CO2 water plus heat. These are chemicals. This is energy. And if I ask you to give the products, I'm asking about chemicals. And if I ask, give the product or products sort of following, how do you do this? Say, oh, that's a saturated hydrocarbon, oxygen. And the general reaction tells me I get CO2 plus water. When I ask you give the product or products, you do not, do not have to balance a chemical equation. If I want you to balance it, I'll ask you to balance it. That's combustion and you need to know this general reaction so you can use it to predict this. Next, hydrogenation. Do you have a double bond and react it with hydrogen? And a catalyst, where the catalyst can be platinum, palladium, or nickel. You break one of the two bonds of the double bond, and you get the new molecule. So if I were to do this, What is the product or products? Immediately look for what's different. What's not a carbon-carbon single bond and a double bond. And here's the general reaction you need to know. Do you break carbon-carbon single bonds? No. So I start with three, I end up with three. The two carbons here become these two carbons. Notice I broke one of the double bonds. There's only a single line there. And these two carbons, my general reaction says, will get hydrogens. And now I know there are four bonds to carbon, and I can put in the rest of the hydrogens. Now, you should know a fat is a triglyceride that's a solid or semi-solid at room temperature. An oil is a triglyceride that's a liquid at room temperature. And you should know beef fat is tallow. Pig's fat can be called white, 
yellow or white grease. You should know this. And how does soap work? You should know and be able to draw soap as a nonpolar tail and a polar head. And the most important thing is like dissolves like. I don't have it on here, but I'll draw it. Water is polar, dirt and grease are nonpolar. And if you had a magnified piece of dirt, you should know how to do this. The dirt attracts the nonpolar tail of the soap molecules. And I'm only gonna draw a couple in, but it totally surrounds the dirt. And this new thing is called a micelle. And you should know that. And water looks at the micelle and only sees the polar heads. And it thinks, oh, micelle, I'm polar, you're polar. Let's go down the drain together. And they do. And you should know, how does a towel work? It hydrogen bonds to water. And the hydrogen bond is from the OH group. This you don't have to know, but you might be interested to the water. And you form the hydrogen bond. And next time you dry your hands, that's happening. All right, thumbs up, people. Do you see important information on your screen? Well, maybe you don't. Well, you should. Everybody see? important information on your screen right now? Thank you, Yelena. All right, this will be given to you. What is the pH? And I show you if the hydronium ion equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus X, then pH is X. And I also give you hydronium ion times hydroxide equals, and I, should have 1.0. If I don't, it's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And for titrations, neutralization, the most important thing is this. And you'll either have to solve for this or this given the other three. And you've learned how to do that. And I didn't notice it because I've been... All right. Thank you, Ruben. I got through it. Again, I don't know why I was having trouble logging in. I apologize. Actually, it wasn't my fault, but and uh, the people at the help desk, which, by the way, the COD help people, the computer help desk are really over the years been very helpful to me and my students, you. When I logged in my normal way through the normal Zoom sign in, it wouldn't let me. I finally figured with their help, use the app, which I've never used before. All right, important thing. One, tonight I will have my office hour. That I zoom, log in through another way through the other school. I have that set up for both schools for that. And I had no trouble logging in there just now before class started, because I tried, because I log in, it was it zoomed just totally down. And also uh, important thing, I'll have my office hour tonight. Remember Friday at a little before 10, I'll send out an email with the password for which version K or W, 
I use my initials for that today, for that test, you'll use. And important thing, I was thinking about it last night, a number of you have not had, are not handing in labs. It's going to really hurt your grade. I'll put out an email today or tomorrow morning. I'm extending my Thanksgiving amnesty until next Tuesday. I don't know what day that is, but next Tuesday, uh, I will do that. Also, real quick before I let you go, uh, by Sunday, 1 p.m., I will have posted your grade for test number four. And by that time or the early afternoon, I'll send out individual emails with the points you receive for each answer on test number four. Next Monday, I will go through test number four answers, but I'm gonna cut the answers out of the video. If you can't make it, come to my office hours. With that, I'm done. And with that, I'm gonna say, gang gesund, and I'll see you next Monday. Remember, on Friday, we will not have a lecture. You'll be taking test number four. But if you have any questions, I'll be logged in. I hope I can get in to Zoom. And uh, you can ask questions or just email me too. I'll be checking my email. With that, gang gesund, goodbye.